What's up guys, Brawless here. I just wanted to give everyone a little tips and tricks video for Vigor, 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 still don't know how to say it, um, on the best loadout and the best avenues to take in Vigor so far that I nice. figured out. So first off, you gotta decide what kind of match that you wanna have. Do you wanna be close range? For close range, I would recommend the Silver Pigeon Shotgun. I found that that shotgun, even though it's only two shots, if you get one or two of them shots on, it's automatic death 100%. But you gotta make every shot count. Boom! Boom! What's up? I'd recommend it, especially for duos. If you go in with a co-op partner, you can have that person lay down suppressing fire so you can flank around and just take them out in the back with your shotgun. But that's, of course, if you want to live dangerously. Now, if you want to go in and you want to have a nice mix of medium and short range with an SMG, then I'm going to suggest the Swami KP-31. Swami Swimo. I don't know how, how you say that, but yeah, here's the picture. So this gun is extremely accurate, like devastatingly accurate. Like you can snipe people with this gun if you really want to. I found that that's probably my favorite assault rifle besides the ADR-97, which is Vigor's answer to the P90. But yeah, it's extremely accurate with an extremely high rate of fire and very stable. So I find that that's probably my favorite mid-range gun if you want to play it safe, yet you can still defend yourself. So those three guns are probably my main picks. Again, Silver Pigeon if you want to go close range like dangerously. The Swami, which is the... What I Swami, which is the PVSH uh, equivalent, and then of course the ADR-97. Now getting into a match is where things get really interesting because how people gamble yeah. in this game really determines out. on yeah, what yeah. path there you want to take and what trajectory that you're trying to accomplish. So you have to be very careful in monitoring where people gamble. So for example, if everyone throws into loot, there's going to be an increased amount of loot and higher tier loot depending on how many people gamble into it. So if it's over 200%, 300%, 400%, that's a good thing, right? So what you want to do is you want to go immediately for the Bard House. As soon as the match starts, you beeline it straight to the Bard House because the Bard House contains the safe. Yeah, he's in and then the safe, if you're able to defend it and you open it, has a lot of rare materials yeah. like the circuit boards, the uh, scrap metal, the gasoline, all that stuff that you need to craft higher tier benches is in there. So obviously if they increase the percentage of it up, then the loot, then you want to go for straight for the safe. However, this is what I advise for when people gamble on the loot. Don't go for the loot box if it's a white or even a green loot box. Honestly, it's not even worth it. Your best bet for when people go in all the way in on the loot gambling is to just walk around and scrounge up as much shit as you can from every building that you run into, every car. Remember the cars carry electronics and the electronics are very hard to come by and very rare especially if you want to get the unlock that allows you to craft two items at the same time in your house so take as much time as you need but keep an eye out and an ear out to make sure that you don't get shot in the back while you're looting now also the other reason that you want to loot the houses is because in the houses there are small lock boxes which are little blue uh, rectangles and on these lock boxes are uh, it's a four or five combination lock and all you have to do is move each section up you know each number up until you hear or feel a vibration and, to, and then you go down the line and once you unlock them all in the right spot then the box will open and you'll get some more high tier loot so you want to loot the houses instead of waiting for the supply drop or going for any of the other you know signal detectors or anything like that because you want that loot so that's my advice if everyone throws into gambling is go for the loot and get the fuck out. Don't worry about killing people. Don't worry about, you know, getting the airdrop. It's not worth it, guys. Now, here's some tips and tricks for when people go all in on the supply drop. Now, this obviously you're going to want to be very careful. If you die, it's over, especially if you gambled. If you gambled on any of these items, your the, the money's gone. You're fucked. So you want to play it very, very safe. So what I recommend is if you're going into a game where people spent money gambling, their crowns gambling on the next highest loot box, wait it out. Especially the higher the tier loot box, wait it out, guys. Be patient. It's really not worth risking the crowns that you spent or getting really high tier rewards from a, a, a legendary loot box if you go into a house and you get shot in the back because you're getting some shitty loot. So what my advice is, is as soon as the match starts, you beeline it straight for the comm station, guys. Now what this comm station is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to move the airdrop to wherever you want it to go. And then also, if you activate the comm station again, you're able to actually mark exactly where the drop is going to go. Now from there, what you're going to want to do is beeline it straight to the signal detector so you can keep an eye out on where people are going to be going, but also how many people are still in the match. Now when you get there, you get an unlimited amount of uses on the signal detector, but there is a cooldown point. So you can use it as many times as you want. You can Your teammate can use it after you. Anybody can use it after you, but you have to wait. I think it's about two, three minutes is what I've noticed. So what you want to do is if you have time, if you're still near the beginning of the match, 
use it around halfway through or maybe less so you know exactly what you're dealing with how many people are still on the map how many people are near exits so you can kind of guesstimate how many people are left on the map and then what that'll do is it'll give you enough time for the this the signal detector to cool down so when the drop comes and as soon as she announces the drop you can pull on it again yeah. From there, you're gonna be able to see exactly how many people are left, where they are, and if they're going for the drop or not. Now, obviously, this part is in your hands. You need to play it safe. You need to slowly creep up. Now, I wouldn't recommend just beelining it straight for the supply drop as soon as it lands. I would recommend waiting a few minutes until the radiation comes. Now, what the radiation is gonna do is it slowly creeps up, right? It takes a while, really long time, actually, to get to you. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna send everyone in a state of panic and give them a high I'm sense of urgency to go straight for that loot drop. So what I recommend doing is camp it out a few minutes, right? Wait until the radiation gets up close to you and then go for the drop because at that point either everyone's dead everyone's evacuated you can keep hitting the signal detector as many times as you want but also you can take anyone out who goes for the drop in the meantime that's going to save your ass from getting shot because you got greedy but then obviously once you're able to get that drop if you're able to get that drop you beeline it straight for the exit now hold y to put your guns away and sprint faster that's right if you put your gun away if you holster your guns on your back and your your holster whatever your character will sprint faster take shortcuts run through trees run between rocks stay off the main road because at that point, everybody is notified that you have the crate and they can all see you on their mini-map. Oh. I got him. He's dead. Go, go. Shit, right in front of me. Got another one. He's down. But that's it, guys. That's all I have for some right. vigor tips and tricks. I noticed that those are some of the most successful routes and strategies that I've used to be able dude, to dude, build dude. up my house in my inventory very large and have a lot of materials. I have over 120,000 materials. I haven't really had to use any yet. And I have plenty of ingredients to craft all sorts of benches without having to really wait. And I'm able to craft two different items at the same time as well, which is great. But thank you all for listening, tuning in. If you guys enjoy the game, please let us know in the comments. Please like and share this video around so we can get more more skilled players in there get more people on this game so we can increase server count as well and increase the amount that people gamble because we all know that we like when motherfuckers gamble where's it see him no i'm trying to got him got him he's dead dude you are on fire